Throughout our lives, at every age, listening plays a fundamentally important role in our learning. Before you ever learned to read or even recognize letters, you learned important lessons about your environment and the world around you by listening to your loved ones. We learn to speak and think and thrive by listening to our family members, our community leaders, our peers, and our educators. Spoken language is a core aspect of what it means to be human. Before our civilizations ever developed literacy, we shared our collective knowledge and wisdom through the spoken word. The oral tradition allowed us to transmit stories, skills, history, and values through the spoken word. Our brains are wired for the spoken word. Language enhances our memory, our attention, and our ability to reason and have the capacity for abstract thought. We can learn to read and write only after we have first mastered how to speak and listen. Listening still plays an important role for adults living in the modern world. The increasing availability of online podcasts, audiobooks, interviews, and lectures has dramatically improved our individual access to knowledge. How can we as educators harness the power of the spoken word to encourage active learning while simultaneously improving accessibility and options for our students? We've spent a lot of time thinking about this topic, and we're excited to share with you some of the ways that we have been trying to answer these questions. My name is Brian Barrick. I teach political science at Los Angeles Harbor College. I'm Sarah Aria. I'm a graduate of Los Angeles Harbor College, and I'm a current political science student at California State University, Long Beach. My involvement in this project is that I was the student narrator, and I'm excited to share more about my experience. I've been utilizing open educational resources in my classes for about five years now, especially the OpenStax American Government Textbook, which I really like because it's available for free and students are able to access it. I never have to worry about students being able to afford a textbook, especially uh, working at the community college level. Many of our students do live under the poverty line and spending $100 or $200 on a textbook can be very cost prohibitive and really create a barrier to student success. Our project was recording an audiobook of the OpenStax American Government textbook and putting it out there for free on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. And the idea was, let's take this free and accessible book and put it into a new format where students can engage with it in a different way. This audiobook is available everywhere where you can access audiobooks, so Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and it's even available as a Canvas add-on. We've been really happy with the success of this project. As of the end of August 2023, we've had over 27,000 views on YouTube alone. That comprises over one year of cumulative streaming time. So a lot of people are watching this. Uh, we've also had over 22,000 unique podcast downloads. Most people are using either Spotify or Apple Podcasts for that. And we've also developed a Canvas shell that's totally free for instructors who'd like to download these materials and embed them right into their online courses or their Canvas shells for web-enhanced courses. The way that I got the idea for this project is that I personally am an auditory learner. I learn best when I'm hearing something or listening to it. And in fact, you can always find me listening to podcasts. When I wake up in the morning, I refresh the podcast feed, see what's interesting. And I'm usually listening to podcasts either about American politics or technology. And I've learned an incredible amount over the years from that. And there was one podcast in particular that really inspired this project, and that's the Bitcoin Audible podcast. So a few years ago, back in 2020, I was interested in learning about Bitcoin. And this podcast Basically, the host just took articles about the topic and would just read them out loud. And usually there'd be some commentary in the background. But I learned so much just from hearing somebody read these articles that I honestly wouldn't have had the time 
to do otherwise. And so as I'm listening to that podcast, I'm also teaching this class on American government, and I start getting the idea for, well, what if we could do something similar for this textbook? Of course, it is an OER resource, so we can remix it, we can, we can change it and adapt it. And that really sparked my interest in putting this out there as a free resource. The only problem at the beginning was that I knew nothing about audio production or microphones or recording an audiobook. But I did want to increase the, the production quality of the videos for my online courses. So I went and I invested in a dynamic microphone and I just thought I would record a couple chapters of the textbook just as a proof of concept. I wanted to show that it would actually work. And in the meantime, I was trying to hit up everybody I knew at my college, the administrators, my department chair, my colleagues, to see if any funding was available. And I unfortunately wasn't able to find any funding for the project until I reached out to two leaders in California that are really prominent in the OER space here, and that's Kelsey Smith and Una Daly. Years ago, when I was working at East LA College, they had done a two-day boot camp on OER, when this was really just an emerging field and not a lot of instructors were familiar with the topic. To this day, that workshop was still one of the most influential uh, professional development opportunities for me as an instructor. And just on a whim, I decided to reach out to them because I knew that they were knowledgeable about OER. And I asked them if they knew of any funding opportunities. And it just so happened that they were both facilitating this new grant project from the uh, U.S. Department of Education called the CC ECHO Project. It was a program uh, designed for California community colleges to develop more OER projects focusing on equity and student success. The CC ECHO program was able to give me grant funding to go out and purchase equipment, which was a real game changer. The microphone that you see me using here, uh, Shure SM7B, is like a $400 microphone. I also had to purchase cables and a mixing board. I used the Rode Rodecaster Pro for that. And um, this really, this project wouldn't have been possible without that funding. So I'm very grateful to CC Echo for helping to get the ball rolling and just helping me to go ahead and work on this project. One of the recommendations that CC Echo had for me was to include a student in the production process of the audiobook. And to be completely honest with you, that was not on my radar at all. I had no um, idea or even thought about doing that. But I'm so glad that they made the recommendation because, you know, Sarah, the student that I ended up working with, contributed uh, just so much to the project and I think made it more engaging. Uh, the final result, I think, is better because of her participation in it. And it was really a pleasure to work with her. So I found out about the project actually when Professor Barrick invited me to be a part. I hadn't heard of it before, but my amazing community college counselor, Ms. Kamen, had recommended me. And initially, I felt excited, but I was also surprised that I had been asked just because I've always been a bit apprehensive about public speaking. I guess she recommended me because I love school and I'm very dedicated to my schoolwork. And so maybe she knew that I would be very dedicated to this project as well. But she did tell me why she recommended me. And she had said, I think she said, Sarah's super intelligent. She'll be able to know all the words. And she's a little soft-spoken, but she'll be great. <laughs> it was something like that. A project like this could be valuable because it helps um, all kinds of students. For example, commuters who could listen to the project on their way to school or working students who don't have the time or perhaps even the funding to purchase a textbook. It is a free resource as well, which is awesome. It could also help students who are learning English as a second language or auditory learners. Um, it could also help people who like to listen to what they're reading as they read along to it. Because I'm thinking about my own experience as an auditory learner, I think about people like me who like to listen and learn or people who like to read and listen at the same time. That's called multimodal learning. So multimodal learning is the idea of using multiple of your sensory inputs to 
uh, learn information. And there's research that suggests that multimodal learning helps us to have better memory and recall of the information that we're learning. So I really do think that it could help learners like me who learn especially well when it comes to listening to information. So all of these populations, I truly believe, could really benefit from audiobooks, not just ours, but any others that are developed in the future as well. But don't just take it from us. Why don't we actually listen to some of the real feedback that students have left for us? And the words that you're about to hear come from real students who've left messages on our YouTube channel or through uh, emails or through class evaluations and surveys. I think it really speaks to the importance of projects like this one. I learn so much better from audio than I do visual. So thank you for this. I will definitely share with my fellow classmates and teacher. I also just wanted to say that I am a disabled student. I have really bad dyslexia and I work full time. Your class was so inclusive from the beginning. When I saw that you not only included the free online textbook but had a free audiobook link, I cried grateful tears because I've never had a teacher who even bothered. In previous classes, I've had to struggle to make the textbooks more accessible myself. The audiobook textbook allowed me to even study at work, making it easier for me to come home after long shifts and actually be able to take care of myself without having to feel guilty over having to choose between sitting down and forcing myself to read or going for a walk to decompress. You made it accessible, easy to understand, and less stressful. If more professors had your passion, I probably wouldn't have dropped out when I was 23. This audiobook was so helpful. I have a learning disability and learn better when I read the text while also listening to it. I hate having to use text-to-speech software because of how it sounds. However, this was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this. I am a student who works 12-hour shifts. Having this allows me to listen to the text and then go home and read it. It has helped me immensely, and my grade shows it. I wish I had the same opportunity in my other classes. Initially, when I had the idea for this project, I imagined that we would be using the recording studio on my campus and that we would go in and we'd be in a proper recording booth. And I actually did that for chapter four. And I got to be honest, it was a lot of work to, you know, drive across town, set up all of the equipment, uh, have to, you know, navigate the times and scheduling everything. And ultimately, the sound quality didn't end up that much better. And so most of the audiobook was actually recorded in my closet. It was a hot summer in Los Angeles. Uh, the temperatures were often above 90 degrees. And I don't even want to know how hot it was inside the closet. Uh, you want to minimize background noises. So we actually had the air conditioner off in my house the whole time. And it would be a number of that, you know, just during the week, during these hot summer days. I also have young children. So at night after I would put them to bed, we're talking like 11 o'clock at night, I would also be recording uh, bit by bit and trying to record. Now it's 30 hours of finished recording, but you make a lot of mistakes along the way. You got to take uh, breaks. You got to catch your breath. And uh, so the actual amount of narration time was quite a bit longer than that. Now, when we recorded Sarah's uh, narration, we would actually meet on campus in an office like the one you see here. And we were both sitting at a desk. Sarah had access to studio headphones and this microphone. And at the same time, I was monitoring on the computer software interface and our mixing board, which was the Rode Rodecaster Pro. So we met across a couple of days, and each day we would record for a few hours. So during the recording process, my part was that I would read the chapter headings, the learning outcomes, and the call-out boxes. So when I heard about the project and I kind of imagined it for myself, I had imagined it much more high stakes and, you know, that we would be in a recording studio and it would be like time to get the perfect take right away. But in reality, it was much more of a, how do I say it? Like, it was just very welcoming and it was okay to make mistakes because we were, you know, editing it and 
it was definitely better than I could have imagined. So when we actually recorded, I wasn't in a recording studio like I had imagined. We were in an office and we had a really cool setup still. We had headphones, microphones, all of the equipment, our laptops. We had the textbook on our laptops and I guess it felt more comfortable and I felt like I wasn't just alone reading like massive heaps of text. I felt like it was more collaborative than that and I got to see the process in real time and learn a lot through that as well. When it came to distributing this audiobook, I always knew that I wanted to have it accessible on podcasting apps. Again, I listen to a ton of podcasts, and it's just so convenient. Most of us even have podcasting apps on our phone, even if we don't use them. And so it really reduces the barriers to getting access to the resource. So in addition to posting it on YouTube, we also uh, established a free account with Spotify, and we're able to use their podcasting hosting services to get uh, all of the hosting done there. So that's completely free. It's very easy to use, actually. We also linked that up with an Apple account, which allowed us to have our podcast also listed on Apple Podcasts, again, entirely for free. And the added benefit of having it as a podcast is you can also embed it in a web page or in a canvas shell. And so there's multiple methods of accessing it, whether that be on your computer or on your smartphone. Now, we also used YouTube and uploaded the audio files to YouTube with advertisements for where to find it on other streaming sites as well, like Spotify. And YouTube has been a probably the best place for us to host this because I think it's the easiest place for students to find the resource. We seem to be getting more traffic on YouTube, although that's, you know, the podcasting has kind of been catching up with that in recent months. But YouTube, it comes up in the Google search results. Most people are looking at Google for their search. And if you search for, you know, OpenStax audiobook, our resources are right there. So that's been very helpful too, just to get more exposure to the project to the general public. So public speaking was a bit hard for me because English is my second language. And although I love reading and writing, I still, you know, take world literature classes and I enjoy that. But reading out loud or speaking in front of a group is very different for me just because that was hard for me growing up, I guess. I think what made me feel nervous was that my pronunciation was sometimes different. And I remember being made fun of for that a little bit. Um, as I got older, I kind of saw it as something I could laugh off. But I guess I hadn't realized that deep down, maybe I had some self-doubts about speaking. At first, when we started on the first day, I think I was super nervous. But Professor Barrick had a super like welcoming and collaborative approach. And by showing me how some of the editing and recording would work behind the scenes, I was able to sort of move, move past the nerves and see it as part of the project and something that I could actually work on through the recording process. And I feel like by the end of it, I actually noticed in myself a change and that I wasn't so nervous anymore and I was really able to move past it. I took away so much from the project. First, I grew my confidence a ton and that's helped me tremendously as a student because, you know, you do public speaking in class and I'm also a member of our Model UN at my university and public speaking is an integral part of that as well. So I feel like my speaking confidence has improved a ton. And another takeaway is just all of the open doors that have been opened for me. Um, yeah. I feel that this has opened doors for me because it's given me credibility as a student who would like to work on academic projects with professors. And it's really expanded my resume in that sense and also Going into university, I really wanted to assist research, but I was a transfer student, so I didn't have, you know, the connections at the university. 
but Professor Barrick is an alumna of that university and connected me with a graduate student there. And it was like a domino effect. And um, it connected me eventually with two amazing professors whose research I've gotten to assist on. And that was just an incredible experience. And that led me to work on summer research as well with another wonderful professor in international law. So everything was kind of like a ripple effect. And I'm just really thankful. Yeah, when the project was released, we shared it with um, our whole family. I sent it also to my aunts in Germany and my grandma. So they got to have a listen. And that was really fun for us and very cool. My mom was like, she's famous. <laughs> yeah. They were just super proud of me. They thought it was really cool. Yeah. The project just completely grew my confidence. And from beginning to end, I think there was a noticeable change in me. And I just grew more comfortable with speaking. And I also, you know, was listening to my own voice in headphones. And I just became more used to it and more understanding that I could do it. And my self-doubt was actually proven wrong. I think it's invaluable to include a student. And it sounds a little cheesy, but it really could change the student's life. And I know for our audiobook, Professor Barry could mention that, you know, when I would feel like, ah, I'm just the student, like, I don't sound as professional as you when we're recording, he said something that I found really interesting and that caused me to reflect and kind of appreciate my experience more, which was that the student voice is more relatable to students as well, and they can feel perhaps more immersed in the audiobook and more seen as well. It also opened so many doors for me and created just these amazing connections and had a total ripple effect on my academic and career goals. So yeah, it was just really transformative for me as a student. So I'm a rising senior at school and this fall, I'm gonna be applying to graduate school, so law school. And hopefully that goes well. That's what's next, as well as studying for their entrance exam. Because I spent so much time working on this project and really thinking about audio narration and just the huge undertaking that it represents, it also has me thinking about ways that we can improve efficiency in this area for future projects. Because although our project is unique, I don't think that it's the end of audiobooks. I think we're on the beginning of this huge next step in development in having more accessible resources for our students. And I think a lot of people right now are talking about artificial intelligence and how that's going to change education. One of the things I'm really excited about right now is that AI does a really good job at narrating. And so I think of all of the many dozens or even hundreds of hours that I spent narrating this project uh, to think that we can improve the efficiency of having good enough AI narrated textbooks out there, I think that's really going to be the next phase in this. So my plans moving forward is I am trying to secure funding to launch and pilot the very first AI generated OER audiobook. And I'm currently in talks with different folks on my campus and throughout the country to try to find and track down funding. If you're watching this and you have funding, please reach out and let me know because I want to make more of these audio books. I want to do more of this stuff for the students. And I would love to connect with you. Uh, I really do think that this presents a lot of opportunities for us as educators going forward. We've hoped that you found some value in learning about this project. If you ever want to connect with us or talk about similar projects that you might have or just brainstorm, please know that we're very happy to do that. It's been a remarkable pleasure to be able to be here and talk with you all. And again, thank you for your time. Wishing you all the best. Thank you so much for watching our conference presentation. We hope you had valuable takeaways and we thank you for your time. Ha, ha, ha.